What is going on guys, Vlad here with AsolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or any other application development for industrial automation, consider hitting this subscribe button down below on your screen. And of course, the notification bell to receive the latest videos that I will be putting out on this channel. Without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about forces. Forces is an extremely important topic which is present on most PLCs. So what I have here on my desk right now is my L24 ER Compact Logix PLC and we're going to be live with this PLC and we're going to be discussing what forces are first and then we're going to jump into a couple of demonstrations. So first and foremost you will notice that forces are typically present in the top left corner when it comes to Allen Bradley PLCs at least and as you can see here by the indicator which says no forces there are no forces present within this program. We are of course online in a remote run uh, option and there's going to be a couple of uh, different features which we can enable and disable so first of all we're going to focus on io forcing which is the most important and the most common topic so here you have a way to enable all io forces disable all io forces and remove all io forces but first what are forces exactly so forces are a way to essentially permanently enable or disable a certain output forces can only can only be applied to uh, plc outputs as well as remote outputs that you might be adding to your hardware so in terms of this plc let's go all the way down and we're going to find the embedded io which is right on the plc itself so here as you can see embedded io here it is embedded discrete io so it's going to reside in local one inputs outputs and control so let's go all the way up into our controller tags and we will find local one as you can see input and then we have output and we have a data so here what you can do is of course you can write a program which is going to write zeros and one to these outputs but in my case i have a routine so let's go look at that routine right now so here you have a main program and inside of this outputs loop we have a setup for all the outputs that can be triggered on the plc so for example here we have output local one which if we let's see if we can toggle this so no something's not letting us toggle it let's go trace it back so we're going to cross reference this output and if i remember correctly it is set up in the for loop so within the for loop uh what i'm doing is i have a lot of logic which allows me to toggle outputs through a very uh, very interesting uh, routine so what we need to go do here is let's see here so we're going to monitor this and we're going to see if we can toggle these outputs so these are booleans we should be able to toggle them like so and i'm just looking at the plc right now so the plc of course as you can see as i will bring into your attention here at the middle corner which is where the embedded io is i don't know how well you can see but there's three outputs that are lit up which are the three outputs that we've looked at uh, and we essentially set to one inside of this logic. Now, your logic can be doing whatever it wants. If there is a force present, it is going to completely overwrite all of your code and it's going to ignore what's uh, present. So for example, here, all of my outputs are currently set to zero. If I right click this output, what I can do here, well, actually what I cannot do here is because this is a local bit. So this is a Boolean which I've defined on the PLC. So that cannot be forced. Remember, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can only force outputs. So we need to go back to the logic, um, essentially not to the logic, but to the bits which are tied to the outputs themselves. And here we have uh, the full array of the 16 outputs. Remember, those are local one output data zero because of the embedded io module here and the description at the bottom so now here i can right click this entire row and i can force on what this does is first of all as you can see there is an enabled force if i if i kind of go out of this you will see that first of all this is purple that's your first indicator second of all as you can see it says forced over here and that's the forced mask so the first output is going to be uh, on a mask of one so that is going to be forced true that being said it is not forced until we enable forces on the controller so if i go into forces io forcing 
enable all IO forces, it's going to first of all prompt me that I do want to enable all the forces. Once I say yes, as you can see, everything is lit up red. And this output is uh, because of the force that we've put on is now forced on. And let's look at it now. So as you can see on the output, I don't know how well the camera can capture that. I'll try out a different angle. But as you can see that output number zero or output, essentially the first output in our um, array is now forced to being one. So even though there is a zero written to it, it is still being forced to be always on. And of course, this can still be changed by your uh, logic if we go into the other tags that we were just on in one second. So let's put that into one. So let's say your logic is doing something. It is setting that output regardless of the force. That being said, that is completely ignored. So your output can be low, high, uh, it can do whatever it wants. It will always be uh, superseded by this force tag. And just like we did with that specific output, we can do that force on on any desired output. So here, as you can see, we're forcing a zero, one, as well as five. We can equally just as well, we can force off. So if we force off, the opposite is going to be true. We are always going to write the zero regardless of the logic. Of course, if it's going to be a Boolean one, it is going to stay at that zero level. So forces are essentially a tool which allow you to force the outputs, so to speak, or essentially write a permanent value to that specific output. And the question that you might be asking or wondering is why would you need forces? Now, from experience, what I've seen is that this is usually a maintenance slash engineering type of feature. And what happens in the field is, for example, you have a night maintenance uh, shift electrician or technician that comes in and um, what happens is let's say for example a certain motor which needs to not be running for whatever reason it is permanently running and it is causing a lot of problems or vice versa it is not running like for example let's say a stir in a tank i've seen this where the motor would um intermittently turn on turn off inside of the logic and somebody who doesn't have the uh maybe not the capability but just not the time to uh figure out what's going on they can simply force that output which goes back to the contactor of that motor and they've essentially not solved the problem necessarily but they've allowed the plant or the manufacturing facility to continue producing product so it's a very important tool and it's important to recognize once forces are enabled they are essentially masking all the logic behind that that particular output um, the other applications like I said so it's going to be a good maintenance tool but what I use it for as as an engineer for example is during startups instead of you know toggling these outputs one by one I can simply right click and I can force them in order to see what's going on I can force you know certain lights and I can see exactly uh, what's happening in the field despite the logic being there and kind of doing its thing I can always force on or off uh, regardless of the uh, state of that particular output um, last but not least, I want to kind of warn you about using forces. So forces are not designed to be used all over the place. The goal of forces, like I said, it is a maintenance and engineering tool, but it should not remain in place once you are done with the PLC program. The best way to figure out where forces are at, so here, uh, I believe there is a way. So you can definitely disable all of the forces, but that's not the way uh, to do this. If you do find forces on your controller, I would not recommend just, uh, just essentially uh, just essentially removing all forces and disabling our, on a running controller. So unless you're familiar with the application, I would not just disable them because usually there is a reason why the tags have been forced. So what you need to do is effectively figure out what has been forced. So you can select this filter on can be forced. And let's see if that shows us anything. So can be forced, as you can see, only outputs that we have here. And I believe you can also force inputs, but uh, that's usually not good practice because an input can be um yeah i guess you can force an input as well so if you have a sensor that has faulted out and i've seen i've seen this before in the field as well if you have a sensor that faulted out and somebody just doesn't want to replace it right away they force it on and they leave it as is or some kind of a switch is broken so they just force on a certain application so that's pretty much uh, what you can do. But just to come back on the warning, like I said, forces are not meant to be left in place. So you should always try and seek and eliminate forces. So as I've shown you here, you will notice that if everything is collapsed and you filtered by can be forced, you will notice this red little arrow 
on this particular row and of course you can expand this like so and then you can figure out where the forces are present and of course if you cross reference you should be able to figure out uh, why this tag has been forced in the previous place or uh, why has it has it been forced by somebody at your facility and one by one you need to eliminate these forces of course you can also right click it in the ladder logic you can say remove force and it will disappear as you can see there's going to be a little indicator which tells it if it's forced on or off and once again of course once you disable the forces you will still see uh, so let's see disable the forces you will still see the tags but you will not see that little red arrow which means that the forces are enabled so what it will tell you here is that forces are present so if you can remove forces that means there are forces on the controller but they are not enabled so if we click on remove all forces as you can see all those little tags are gone and there are no forces present on the controller and this is ultimately the state that you would want your controller to be you don't want to have uh, any forces on a running controller and as an engineer or technician electrician whatever it might be your goal is to periodically go back into your code and essentially eliminate uh, forces so I've seen a lot of applications where I would come into a plant which has been running for a long time and there would be you know tons and tons of forces and you just need to go through them figure out why they have been forced remove forces one by one make sure operation is correct and then leave the PLC as it is here with no forces on it so Hopefully that was insightful. If you guys have any questions, make sure to post them on the forum section. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.